uh, with Dr. James Dowd, uh, author of The Vitamin D Cure today. And doctor, in your book you say that more than half Americans are vitamin D deficient. Why is that? Well, it has to do with uh, a culture change, okay? Uh, if you just go back maybe 50 years, um, uh, this is before the cell phone, before the personal computer, before flat screen TVs, before cable TV. The people okay. survived then, actually. Right? <laughs> That's right. Okay. We actually were alive back then and breathing. <laughs> um, uh, we had dial up telephone, three network television stations, um, uh, and that was it. So for entertainment, you had to get up off your backside and do something, okay? And there was less that was automated, me mechanized, and everything. And so just routine daily chores and things required more physical activity, mm. particularly outside, okay? Um, uh, Fifty years ago, um, they had uh, probably just came out with some of these uh, um, uh, lawn mowers that were motorized. And I remember my dad, when I was a child, had a push mower that was just those blades, mm -hmm. and it was those things are heavy. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a lot more to work, work to even mow the that yard. Wasn't self propelled. Right, exactly. No self propelled <laughs> mowers, no motorized <laughs> blades. Uh, it was just you grunting, pushing. Uh, so there was a lot more physical activity. There was a lot more sun exposure. There was uh, 50 years ago, how many McDonald's was there? I remember when I was a kid, if McDonald's came to town, it was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. we're, we've moved into a new era. Um, uh, and I remember when I was a child in the, in the, in the late 60s, or it was probably mid 70s and Doritos were invented, okay? And, and I thought, oh my God, it's like manna from heaven. Where did this wonderful thing come from? So it was, it, you know, things have changed dramatically. We don't, we don't see that it's changed. We look back maybe five or 10 years ago, no, it's always been this way. It hasn't been this way. Mm -hmm. It was very different. Um, and all of those things have impacted our health. We're much less physically active. We get, and, and physical activity, according to the CDC, is tied directly to vitamin D levels. So when we're sedentary, vitamin D gets stuck in our fat stores mm -hmm. and doesn't get out. Okay. Okay? Um, uh, when we don't get out in the sun, um, we don't make vitamin D because the ultraviolet B radiation, which is really only available in the, in the spring, summer, and early fall um, uh, in, in most of the country, um, uh, is the only kind of sunlight that makes vitamin D. So if we're, uh, we're stuck inside playing video games or Xbox or whatever they are called now, <laughs> because now, now, the, now, the, now the video game is responding to your movement, mm -hmm. which is actually a, a, a pleasant development that actually you have to move to make your video game work um, more than your <laughs> thumbs. Uh, but it's still not as much physical activity as it used to be, riding your bike to the movie theater, riding your bike two miles away to go see a friend. This was intense physical activity, and, and our kids are not getting that, and, and so they're not getting outside either when, uh, at the right time to make vitamin D. So, so the, our lifestyle has changed dramatically, and even adults, where most of our entertainment, most of our work is indoors mm -hmm. now, and it's much less physically active. Well, if you mention more than half are, are deficient, is there certain groups or groups of people that are more at risk than others of being deficient? Yes, there are some high-risk groups, and we have a, uh, um, on the, uh, the, the website for the book, www.thevitamindcure.com, there's a, a risk profile. It's also in the book, um, and the risk profile scores points, more points for these, these high-risk uh, uh, features. Um, uh, so high-risk groups are people who have darker skin tone, that's a particularly high risk group. So African Americans, um, 90 plus percent of them are vitamin mm. D deficient. 75 percent of Latinos are vitamin D deficient. Um, uh, uh, whereas only 50 to 60 percent of Caucasians or, or European Americans are, are vitamin D deficient. So skin tone is very important in, in, as a risk factor. Um, and because melanin in your skin is actually a sunscreen, and so mm. you need more exposure to get past okay. this uh, screen. Um, obesity, um, when your body mass index goes over 30, um, which is the CDC definition using body mass index of obesity, um, uh, your risk for vitamin D deficiency uh, climbs uh, um, more rapidly. So ob ob obesity is a significant risk factor. Actually just being female is a risk factor. So women have slightly more vitamin D mm -hmm. deficiency, particularly among European Americans. So once your skin is as dark as African American, um, Pretty much everybody's deficient. It doesn't matter. It's a lot, uh, that, it's, that's such an overwhelming risk factor that it washes out a lot of other risk factors. But among European Americans, 
um, uh, vitamin D deficiency is uh, more prevalent in women than it is in, in men. Hmm. Um, the, the final category that's probably really high risk is um, breastfed infants. Uh, breast milk, because the mothers are deficient already, breast milk has little or no vitamin D in it, hmm. and certainly not enough to have any impact on the vitamin D of the breastfed infant. So the American Academy of Pediatrics has recommended that all breastfed infants be fortified with vitamin D um, uh, at, uh, I, I think they just raised it to 400 units. Um, uh, and so, uh, uh, so you need vitamin D um, uh, in these high risk situations and you, you pretty much need to, to supplement it to get it in the, in the context of our mm -hmm. current uh, sedentary indoor lifestyle. When you talk about the darker the skin, the, the better chance of being deficient. What about the other end of the spectrum when people that are very fair skin that really can't spend a lot of time in the sun, one would think that they would be deficient as well, but that's not the case? Uh, on the other, other end of the spectrum, uh, with fair skin, uh, it, it, there's a, it's a double-edged sword. Number one, yes, they will make more vitamin D with less exposure to the sun um, at the right time of the year. Um, and probably even with less skin exposed uh, to the sun. But they also burn much more quickly, um, uh, which may put them at higher risk for skin cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's that uh, dilemma. Um, uh, I, I never discourage patients from getting uh, sun because the amount of sun that we need, there's, a, there's actually a, a reasonable safety window there, okay? Uh, Michael Hollick has done a lot of this research, and, and it's, uh, the, uh, the skin exposure units are referred to as minimal erythemal dose, okay? So one MED, minimal erythemal dose, is the amount of sun exposure that produces just a very faint pinkness of the skin. Now, most of the studies show that at 25% one MED, so one quarter of that sun exposure, um, produces a ton of vitamin D, mm. which means you could get four times that exposure before you turn a little pink. Mm -hmm. Turn a little pink is, is the break point where you say, okay, from this point on, I'm, I'm getting sunburn, Burn, yep. below which I'm not, okay? Mm. Uh, and so there actually is a fairly broad window of safety, um, uh, but with our use of sunscreen today, we're, we're we're defaulting to zero mm -hmm. uh, uh, because if applied appropriately, SPF 8 will block 95% of vitamin D production. And SPF 15 will block, block close to 98% of vitamin D production. So when we take our children, one of the more vulnerable groups of mm -hmm. people, when, as far as need for vitamin D goes, and we slather them up with sunscreen and send them outside, they get no vitamin D, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, uh, and so uh, this is another one of our cultural changes. You know, 50 years ago, there was no sunscreen either, nope. okay? Um, uh, and regular small exposures to sun will build up a bit of a tan, mm -hmm. that, which is our protection, um, uh, and is a safe way of getting regular sun exposure. But if we tend to be sort of the weekend athletes or the yard, weekend mm -hmm. yard people, and what we do is, Indoors, behind a desk and a computer, six and a half days, half a day on a Saturday or Sunday, baking in the sun. And of course, you, you haven't built up any melanin, so mm -hmm. you get burned every time you go out. This is probably the, the best explanation for why we're seeing a rise in skin cancer. Not so much, I, I mean, I just don't think that there's an epidemic of people going to tanning salons, mm -hmm. okay? Um, uh, I think it's this, the way we're getting sun exposure has changed as part of our culture. Um, and we're now getting it in big doses very infrequently mm -hmm. rather than modest doses um, on a regular mm -hmm. basis. And certainly modest doses on a regular basis is much safer. You mentioned women are at higher risk too. Why is that? Women are probably at higher risk um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, they have um, a higher percent body fat. And we know that vitamin D has this uh, sort of uh, proclivity for, it's a fat soluble vitamin and like attracts like, mm -hmm. so it tends to be stored in, in fat cells um, until you mobilize it. And the way you mobilize it is you exercise and burn the fat, uh, and that's how you mobilize it. So women have a higher percent body fat, so their vitamin D tends to stay in fat rather than in the bloodstream where it's going to be measured, and so their level tends to be a little bit lower. Historically, we've also always thought of women's jobs as being less physically active and indoors more often mm -hmm. than outdoors. And those variables may also explain 
why uh, uh, women's vitamin D levels are lower. That has changed somewhat, but in general, all of our jobs are indoors now, so it hasn't changed for the better. It's just that men, men's vitamin D levels are probably dropping sure. because we're all moving indoors too, as our economy becomes more of a service economy rather than a, a labor-intensive economy. How about geography? How, what, what role does that play in, in, in vitamin D deficiency and where we live? Um, geography played a larger role um, when we were outdoors with our work and our lifestyles mm -hmm. than now that we're indoors. So the, the indoor nature of our current culture has sort of um, neutralized the effect of geography, but there is a clear difference in geography. Um, and there's some interesting graphicals I put in the book, and I stumbled across this. They're on the National uh, uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website. So this is all your hard-earned tax dollars uh, <laughs> to work for the federal government. So they publish these nice uh, UV index charts um, that are seasonal so that you can see it start in January and rise and mm -hmm. peak in July and then go back down. Um, and you can look at that, and it tells you, and then there's on the, on the y-axis is the, uh, the UV index. If your UV index is above 3, you can start to make vitamin D. If your UV in, and the higher above a UV index of 3, the faster you're making vitamin D. Okay. But what's interesting is uh, I gave a talk in, uh, in Anchorage, Alaska, and they have maybe six weeks that their UV index is above three to make mm -hmm. any, any vitamin D. Then you can go look at the, the, the UV index data for uh, uh, Hawaii, um, and it's above five or six UV index year round. year round. And at peak in the middle of June, it's like 13. So, I mean, you're really cranking out the vitamin D. With that in mind, you can go on National Library of Medicine and you can, there are a handful of case reports from the University of Hawaii or other, uh, mm. of people in Hawaii with vitamin D deficiency because they never get outside. Sure. <laughs> so, you, the sun can be there and it's there during certain times of the year mm. and you can use um, tables that are readily available on the web or you can use the Weather Channel will tell you what the UV mm -hmm. index is uh, right now um, on this day by just logging on and checking the UV index. Sure. And that will give you an idea, can I make vitamin D today or can I not make vitamin D today? The problem with our lifestyles and how much we get outside and our use of sunscreen and all these things um, uh, tell us that most of us probably need to be supplementing vitamin D because there are just too many obstacles uh, in, in, in our way in, uh, of getting enough sunshine to make enough vitamin D. So we could all move to Florida, but if we don't go outside, it doesn't matter, right? That's right. <laughs> okay. And some of my patients have asked for that prescription. <laughs> sure. Thank you.